last battle. It is time to talk about the Polaroid Go. Honestly, I think I can sum my thoughts about this camera up in a single meme. This sucks. All right, I'm just kidding. There's a little bit of nuance to it, but it kind of does suck. A lot of people have been asking me when I was gonna get around to making this video, but you guys know the deal. I like to use the camera for a significant amount of time before I make a video about it. Let's just jump right into it. I have a lot to talk about. The photos, the pricing, the size, what it's like to use the camera, who I think it's for. There's probably gonna be some Doom memes in here. Buckle up, smash that subscribe button, and, uh, and enjoy this video, <laughs> you dick. <laughs> yeah, that's the intro take I went with. The photos are reasonably sharp, for the size anyway, it's about what I'd expect from a Polaroid. Pretty much since 2019, 2020, I've had much more consistent results with the Polaroid film. If you go back a couple years and look at my Polaroid videos, that was my biggest complaint with the whole ecosystem. Provided you're in the ideal setting, the colors can be really excellent. The sunset vibes are absolutely gorgeous on the more modern Polaroid cameras, and that has a lot to do with the new light meters. I've also found a magenta shift on quite a few of my photos, and some of them are outdoors, some of them are indoors, different weathers. It's just, it's kind of random. Not sure if we can chalk that up to it being a bad batch of film or what, but certainly worth mentioning. And I can assure you that I am not the only one who's experienced this. And before you comment, these are from different packs of film. I shot them in a number of different settings, different weathers, indoors, outdoors. I follow the best practices, so I'm pretty confident when I say this isn't user error. There is definitely something f going on with the colors here because my glasses look like they're blue light filters, which they are not. They are clear. So something is wrong with the colors. <laughs> It's worth noting that I saw some opacification failure on some of the first photos I took right out of the box, so make sure you clean those rollers just in case. I even had a frame that came out with a huge undeveloped patch, which was, uh, th that was charming. I was very happy about that. Ew! On a more practical note, I think this camera excels in one specific area, portraits. I think this camera is meant for parties, behind the scenes photos, close up shots of you and your friends, and selfies. The best time I had using this camera was coincidentally the last pack of film I shot on it before making this video. And I shot that pack during the production of my last short comedy sketch film thing over on the other channel, Things That Blank My Blank. You can watch that on Nailed It, blah blah, link is in the description below. But my friends and I have always talked about how we never have fun behind the scenes production photos. I ended up taking way more photos than I thought I would on set with the Polaroid Go. It's really awesome to see the progression of the day and it kind of matches with the film itself. These photos tell the story of the production and honestly they mean a lot to me. But would I feel any different had I taken these photos on literally any other instant camera? No, honestly, they would be just as sentimental on the Polaroid now. The only real advantage to the Polaroid Go is the size, which I'll get to shortly. But I really do need to emphasize that was the most fun I had with the Polaroid Go. Just taking photos of my friends and I. I don't know, it's just there was something fun about it. The big problem I have with the Polaroid Go is that that was the only time I had fun using the camera. I usually have a pretty good time no matter what I'm shooting when I'm using my Polaroid Now or Now Plus or even my SX70 when it decides to work, uh, which is like once a year. I don't really think the Polaroid Go excels at landscape stuff. When I make these videos, I really enjoy shooting mundane stuff around me. I like taking a camera with me when I'm running an errand, you know, and taking a photo. I'm a man who's fond of gas stations and diners. You know, snapshits. But when you go for a wide shot on this thing, the photos are just so small that I feel like the detail just really doesn't translate very well to the size. It's just too small. That's what she said. <laughs> So let's address the elephant in the room, or some other smaller creature, considering elephants are, um, you know, big. Let's address the squirrel in the room. The biggest gripe I have with the photos is the size. I feel like that old lady squinting meme when I look at these photos. The Polaroid Go is obviously much smaller than the Polaroid now. I wouldn't go so far to say it's pocketable. If you have big ass cargo shorts, maybe, but this thing, I mean, it, it's much smaller than the now. To be totally fair though, it is the winter right now, so jackets and hoodies are on the table and it does fit in a jacket pocket. But the photos are much more important than the camera itself, in my opinion. Here's a quick size comparison of the Polaroid Go versus the iTime photos. And keep in mind iType and 600 photos are the same size. And just for fun, here's the Polaroid Go next to an Instax Mini. I'm just gonna say it, I don't get it. I don't get the appeal of the small frame. It's just, it's, it's small, that's the whole thing. The entire hook of this camera is, it's small. And hey, if you want that, if you want a small frame, if you want a small camera, then cool, here it is. But for me, I don't get the point. 
It's like those Doom mods with the tiny Marauder. I mean, the Marauder is such a cutie patootie anyway. He's such an ooh-woo fest for me. But then you start thinking about it a little bit more and you go, Why? 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 I think mad people felt that way when they first saw the Polaroid go, that big ooh-woo energy. Then they used the camera. When this thing first came out, all anyone said was, Oh my god, look at how small and cute it is. That's what she said. Or he said. And if you remember when it first came out, I said this. I wasn't necessarily hyped for this camera. I mainly got it for you guys. I just, I don't know, I wasn't sold on the format. And I gotta tell you, after shooting a handful of Polaroid Go frames, uh, I think 13 to be exact, I'm still not sold on the format. And then after a couple of months, I said this. I know, I still haven't made that review yet. I will. Uh, but spoiler alert, I'm still not sold on the format. And now that I've had ample time with the camera and I'm finally making the review, honestly, I'm still not sold on the format. <laughs> the other sticking point I have with the Polaroid Go is the pricing, both of the camera and of the film. The Polaroid Go is in a very similar price point to the Polaroid Now. Currently the Go is on sale from Polaroid for 100 bucks with two packs of film, which honestly that's a little bit better than the normal price of 120 because you know what else is 120 is the Polaroid Now. And for me, it's a no-brainer. I would obviously go for the Polaroid Now over this camera. So for me, for this to work, this would have to be in a way lower price point, like 60 bucks, 80 bucks maybe. Maybe, because it just feels like a much more casual camera. And I gotta tell you, I think seeing that discount on the Polaroid Go tells you all you need to know about how well that camera is selling. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people on YouTube talk about how in the long term the Go film is cheaper. The Polaroid Go film is 20 bucks and you get 16 exposures versus the iType film which is 17 bucks and you only get 8. Well, yeah, I sure hope that's the case. The Go photos are like a third of the size of the iType. The Polaroid Go film should honestly be even cheaper, like say the Fujifilm Instax Mini where you get 20 frames for $14. And on that note, those Instax Mini frames are still bigger than the Go frames. Now, devil's advocate here, I do recognize the fact that this is the first new format from Polaroid since 1999, which is a good thing for instant photography, and I assume that there will be a premium with that since it's new technology. Technology. Or is it? Let's take a quick step into Sweet Lou's conspiracy corner. What if the Polaroid Go film is just leftover Spectra film? Polaroid Spectra is a format that Polaroid recently discontinued that I also got a lot of shit for because I put it in a toaster in a video, which I thought was funny, but a lot of people did not. If you look at the back of iType and 600 film, you'll see that there are borders on the left and right side of the photo. But if you look on the back side of a Spectra photo, there are no borders on the left and right sides. And if you look at the back of a Polaroid Go photo, there are also no borders. Could explain the magenta tint if these are all expired. But these are just my opinions, and I gotta tell you, I don't think this camera is designed for me. Once I used this camera for the behind the scenes production photos of my friends and I, I realized that this camera wasn't really made for someone like me. I think someone who's younger, someone who's into taking photos with their friends, someone who's into selfies, this camera would probably rock their socks. For someone like me, I don't really put a lot of value into that sort of thing, so it's not really up my alley. So all this isn't to say that people can't have fun with the camera, I'm sure there are tons of people who enjoy this camera for what it is, it's just not really my sort of thing. This camera is really simple and ready to roll right out of the box, but I want to talk about some of the features really quick before we get out of here. First and foremost, of course, is the shutter button, which is the red one right on top. You press that to take the photo. I think we all knew that one. Right next to it is the flash override button, so you can hit this once to turn the flash off. The camera doesn't have a memory for the flash override, so if you want to take multiple photos in a row without the flash, you'll have to hit the button in between each photo. The flash button also controls two other features. The first one is the self timer. All you have to do is press and hold the flash button for two seconds and you'll see a little orange light come on in the front of the camera. Then you hit the shutter button, get in front of the camera, and there you go, you have nine seconds. The other function in the flash button enables double exposure photography. You're going to press the flash button twice rapidly and on the display that normally shows your frame counter, you'll see a blinking one. You can take the first exposure and then it'll switch to a two. You take the second exposure and there you go, you have a double exposure. In a perfect world, the flash button would have also controlled an exposure compensation, but alas, there is no exposure compensation on the Polaroid Go. Everyone disliked that. One more quick thought about the flash. I have found that the flash's range is not that great. When I've taken selfies where people are behind me, it seems like the flash will light me, but not the people behind me. It doesn't have that range, so keep that in mind and try and have people right next to you, because the further back they are, the more the light's gonna fall off, and the more it's gonna look like you're the only person that matters. There's a 
viewfinder tube and it's pretty damn accurate even though it's not looking straight through the lens the composition is, is more or less pretty accurate. You'll notice on the front of the camera that the viewfinder window also acts as a mirror so if you're taking a selfie you can use that to line up your photo. Now onto the lens. The Polaroid Go has a 34mm lens and that's on a 35mm equivalent, which that is a very confusing sense. <laughs> the lens has a minimum focusing distance of about a foot and a half or 45 centimeters, so it should be good for selfies, I guess, unless you're an infant, in, in which case then you're probably not using this camera. Anyway, if you're taking photos of someone else, make sure you're not getting closer than a foot and a half, otherwise your photos are going to be out of focus. In terms of the shutter speed, it ranges from 1 1 25th to 1 second, depending on how the light meter works, which like I said earlier, the light meter is pretty reliable. That said though, I did have a few instances where it used a really slow shutter speed in broad daylight when I turned the flash off. Not quite sure why that happened, but I didn't love that. And last but not least, it has an aperture of f12 and f52. And here's one really important tip about the Polaroid Go. When I made my first video about the camera, I mentioned the fact that there is a weird delay in some of my shots. It turns oh, yeah. out that that was actually because my finger was blocking this sensor on the front of the camera. I found that if you block this sensor, like even a little bit, it won't take the photo until you move your finger out of the way. Maybe that's just a problem for me because I have big meaty claws. The Polaroid Go has a rechargeable battery. The input is on the side of the camera so you can charge it up. The battery life is really good, honestly. I think I've only charged this camera like once since I've had it, so no complaints there. And Polaroid claims on their website that one charge is good for 15 packs of film. The bottom of the camera opens up and that's where you load up your film. There's yellow arrows, you just line those up and drop the cartridge right in there. It's very self-explanatory. And the dark slide will eject once you close the bottom of the camera. Then you're good to go. One other nitpicky thing about the camera, it's really loud. When you take a photo, the grinding, whirring, wee noise is kind of irritating. I really hope you liked my impression there. If you're looking for a small, casual, instant camera, there are very few choices. It's this or the Instax Mini, so take your pick. If having a teeny tiny camera doesn't matter to you so much, then I'm definitely going to recommend the Now or the Now Plus over this camera. But if the size is a big deciding factor and you care a lot about taking selfies, this might be a good camera for you. I'm finding it really tough to put this camera on the Owen Wilson Wow scale. On the one hand, it's just not my thing, so I'd probably give it like 4 Owen Wilson Wows out of 10 if it was just talking about me, but being impartial and thinking about what other people might want. I'd say it's fair to give this camera like a 6 to 7 Owen Wilson wows out of 10. Wow! I know that's kind of vague. Well, thanks for watching. Make sure you smash subscribe, share the video, and uh, by the way, this video is now over. Bye! Merry Christmas! Like, like and subscribe. And subscribe. Sweet Lou Photography. Dumb man.